It wasn't his first watch, but it was his favourite. She remembered him saying that on their first date when she commented on it, around 9pm. It caught her eye. The silver bezel, the ridged crown, and most importantly, the lack of numbers. She stared at the second hand, which moved smoothly, inexorably. Oh no, uh, my first watch was just a cheap Casio from my dad, he explained. This one's from my mum. It was that evening when she thought she could maybe fall in love with him. They had met at seven for drinks, a pint for him and a vodka tonic for her in the college bar. Five years later, it was lunchtime and they were smiling for a photo as they signed the wedding register in the sparse town hall. The watch went through several reincarnations. It started out with a tan leather strap that became cracked and worn from his hours spent carrying briefcases full of paperwork to and from the office. By the time their daughter arrived on that autumn dawn morning, he had changed it to a navy nylon band. More casual, he reasoned. It was, that, it was years later that he swore off stainless steel straps after one of the tiny pins fell out and their 13-month-old son was caught red-handed, about to place it in his mouth just before, just before dinner time. And now she was cradling the watch between her fingers. It had a plain black strap, but the face was still the same. She had been used to seeing him take it off before bed every night, always surprised by the slightly paler shade of skin it left underneath, as if she'd never seen it before. She put it on. When he knew this day would come, sooner than they both thought, he'd arranged for a hole to be punched that would make the band fit a smaller circumference, especially for today. That second hand seemed to have continued moving since the first time she noticed it. She looked outside as the procession of lacquer black cars pulled up, one by one. Walking past the first, without looking at its elongated windows and gleaming silver handles, she got into the back of the second car. Their daughter was already in the back seat waiting for her, and their son was in the front passenger. Both had been driven from their own homes, where they lived with their own families now. She glanced down at her wrist. It was time to go.